Hey guys, I'm Tom Tech Jap, and if you're a regular on the channel, you'll know that I think the Dell XPS 13 is one of the best laptops you can buy. It's not perfect, and it is still quite expensive, uh, but I think, as the horrible YouTube cliche goes, it's a good all-rounder. So, I've actually teamed up with Intel, who are very kindly sponsoring this video, uh, because they've asked me to basically test a laptop with one of their fancy new 11th gen Tiger Lake chips, and I'm kind of curious not only how this performs, but also how fast it is in games. And to give some context, here is another Dell XPS 13, uh, one I made earlier. This is actually uh, the exact same spec, but um, the previous early 2020 model with 10th gen Ice Lake processors. So this is gonna be a perfect side-by-side -side to see just how much faster this is in games. So this is the XPS 13 9310. We've got the i7 1165G7, which of course also comes with their much faster Iris Xe graphics. Intel claims that chip for chip, this new design has around twice the gaming performance of the equivalent 10th gen mobile CPUs. Although some chips lower down the stack still get Intel's older UHD graphics as we get on the 10th gen chips. So the question is, do Intel's claims stack up? Is this significantly faster than last year's model? And is this a nice little mini gaming laptop that can now play games at 1080p? Well, the answer is kind of, sort of, yes-ish. Quick side note though, because some of the new 11th gen chips, including the i7 I have in here, have a higher 12 to 28 watt TDP as opposed to the 7 to 15 watt on some lower end chips in the new range. But importantly, I actually measured this XPS with the higher power chip go way above even the 28 watt TDP range, briefly peaking in the high 40 watts. So basically, it all comes down to the cooling and the fans of the particular laptop you're using. And this is another advantage of 11th gen, the laptop being able to dynamically scale when in performance mode. And so it means laptops like uh, the MSI Prestige 14 I have here, which is using the exact same chip, but because we have a slightly beefier cooling solution, you can see the keyboard lifts up a bit, the fans do whir up a lot louder as well, but this can actually uh, go to an even higher TDP wattage level than the XPS 13 and crucially sustain it for longer. So even though the same chip, depending on the model you go for, you can actually get even more performance. But if I put the uh, MSI back for one moment and then bring back the uh, older 10th gen XPS 13, during my Cinebench test, I actually recorded a 25 to 30% higher clock speed on the 11th gen versus the 10th gen. So we get higher clock speeds for longer and therefore better performance, uh, and it didn't get any hotter or louder, which is pretty cool. Okay, enough waffle, let's get to the gaming, and I'll be testing them at 1080p, uh, because even though these screens are 4K, that's maybe a little bit overkill for a 13 inch laptop. Now maybe a little bit naively, I tried booting up Cyberpunk 2077 just to see if it would work. It wouldn't even start unfortunately, it just kept crashing to desktop. But who knows, future updates or driver optimizations may fix this. I also wanted to try the new Call of Duty, Black Ops Cold War, but unfortunately it just wouldn't even start on this either, uh, neither would it on the old model or even the MSI Prestige 14, maybe because they fall below the minimum spec requirement, but uh, not the best start, so no Cyberpunk, no Call of Duty. But thankfully, Rainbow Six Siege worked fine. And this is one of my go-to test games. It's well optimized, it still looks pretty good. So I averaged a playable 33 FPS on the older 10th gen XPS, but it was pretty choppy with the 1% lows being just 18 FPS at times, which can feel kind of juddery. Now moving to the new 11th gen i7 and the average frame rate jumped from 33 to 51 FPS. That's a 55% uptick. And honestly, it's night and day when it comes to playability. Dropping to medium high settings and I could hit a solid 60 FPS. Not too bad and the frame rate never dropped below 37. But what about this little known game called Fortnite? Well there's good news here as well. At 1080p with medium settings, the 11th gen i7 averaged 36 FPS, up from 26 on the last gen model. Which was just too weak for Fortnite. Too, too weak Fortnite. So getting over 30 FPS here makes all the difference, although I did still suffer from some stuttering thanks to some pretty dreadful 1% low frame rates on both machines. Moving on to Shadow of the Tomb Raider, which is still quite a workout for integrated graphics. On 10th gen, I was averaging around 11 FPS and could only get a playable frame rate by dropping to the lowest settings at 720p. The 11th gen, on the other hand, was up around the mid-20s at 1080p on high. So this is actually two to two and a half times as fast, and while still not ideal, it makes it into a game that you can actually play. 
I'd still drop some settings back to get a solid 30 and reduce some of those choppy feeling 1% lows. But overall, this is maybe the biggest improvement I've seen and it feels so much better. In CSGO, it's an old one, but it checks out. And again, at 1080p with high settings, the new XPS averaged a very respectable 43 frames per second. But it wasn't that much fun to play thanks to some serious and regular frame drops. Limiting the frame rate to 30 did smooth things out a little bit though. And I can't really complain when average frame rates were double what I got on 10th gen. Things are looking up with League of Legends though, which was totally playable on either machine with both managing well over 100 FPS at 1080p with very high settings. I even pushed it to 4K on very high and I averaged 39 FPS on 10th gen and a full 60, 4K 60 on 11th gen. And finally, for the benchmarking nerds among you, in 3D Mark Time Spy, the 11th gen was 47% faster and is actually faster than Nvidia's discrete MX250 GPU, while in Cinebench, which is more CPU intensive, 11th gen had a 21% lead. But don't forget, it's not just performance that's had an improvement here. Battery life is also quite a bit better. In my standard YouTube battery test, the 11th gen XPS 13 lasted nearly an hour and a half or around 20% longer than the older XPS. And this has a lot to do with Intel's more efficient super thin process. And to be honest, I'm pretty surprised it lasted that much longer given it's still based on a 10 nanometer design and with much higher clock speeds and power limits. So faster CPU and GPU, longer battery life. Uh, we also get faster memory. This now supports LPDDR4 4266 megahertz RAM to be exact. We also get Wi-Fi 6 support as well as Thunderbolt 4. There's a lot new here. So while I've been mainly concentrating on the XPS 13, there are of course loads of alternatives with 11th gen chips. So can the 11th gen XPS 13 moonlight as a light gaming laptop? Well, Sort of, it depends on the game really, and if you're playing some older titles like CSGO, League of Legends, even Rainbow Six Siege, then actually you can get pretty impressive frame rates, and I'm seeing anything from 50 to 100 to even 300% improvements in performance with this over this. So even though we still have a couple of issues, Cyberpunk and Call of Duty just didn't run unfortunately, across the board in terms of sheer performance, 11th gen, particularly XC graphics, is a huge upgrade. But let's be realistic, this still isn't a premium gaming experience, and we really shouldn't expect it to be. But overall, I'm still very impressed. 11th gen is a worthy upgrade this year, particularly in the graphics department. But what do you think of the new 11th gen chips and also the XPS 13? Would you be tempted to buy one of these or even just upgrade your current laptop? And if you are using your laptop for games, what are you playing at the moment? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching guys, and if you do want to see more from me then don't forget to hit that little subscribe button down below and I'll catch you next time right here on the Tech Chat.